Hello everyone, Paul Santilli here again from Nashville Intellicon 2024. Uh, where SKIP, the Strategic Consortium of Intelligence Professional, is having our U.S.-based forum. And I'm very pleased to be here with Ansem Belsacoma from Open Trends. He's a Chief Strategy Officer. And we're here to have a discussion around what Open Trends does and how it pertains to the intelligence ecosystem as we talk about here in the SKIP community. So welcome, Ansem. Paul, happy to be here. Thank you for Excellent. having me. Excellent. So tell me more about Open Trends. What is that all about and, and uh, how does it pertain to the, the intelligence community as we're, as we're talking about today? So Open Trends is a custom software development company that focuses on users. Interesting. Um, it's got its own uh, digital design agency mm -hmm. and it focuses on enterprises that uh, in the past we used to say uh, have some digital transformation needs. Mm -hmm. So digital transformation needs from the customer perspective, how does that relate? I'm trying to figure out how that pertains to, is that client facing sort of behavior, digital transformation behavior? Um, help me understand no, that a little Not better. necessarily, okay. it could be internal as well. But we don't deal with, uh, there is another part of the group called Sator that deals with the ERP okay. part of the company. Uh, we're focused mostly on the user facing, which could be a user external user or an internal user. I see. So that is probably, from what we've seen in the intelligence space, um, COVID has really been an instigator by which many organizations are starting to realize the value of digital transformation needs, uh, revamping their IT infrastructure to be more data centric and things like that, especially not only infrastructure as we talked about, but the client facing element. And what we try to do in the SKIP community is really utilize the power of data and intelligence to that client interfacing aspect, applying AI in those circles and really, really up leveling the, the ability for us to have better client relationships, more of a digitally transposed client relationship, one that works more efficiently and more, more effectively for our customer base. Correct, and, and much of digital transformation today is driven by AI. So uh -huh. much of the work we do is AI driven. Um, just a few years ago, it was about having that data, having that cloud, gathering uh, data from sensors like IoT, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that was big, right? Uh, today is about uh, getting that AI tool that brings in efficiency immediately. It's very tangible, mm -hmm. and then digital transformation occurs from that point on. So is this using client-developed data, like from social and things like that nature, or is it still information and data that's generated from IoT or from edge compute tech uh, sources? So we, we live in a world that generates a lot of data. Of course, right? yeah. And um, I remember having conversations, you know, about 10 years ago, and what are you going to do with all I that know. data? I said, yeah. we don't know. Yeah. But what we do know is that that data is going to be very useful. So some of our clients, for instance, in the healthcare industry, um, we built the cloud, we started gathering that data mm -hmm. without them knowing what we, we're going to be able to do in the future. Right, right. Uh, they followed our advice and knowing that maybe five or six years later, we're going to be able to generate products and new revenue streams out of that data, mm -hmm. and that's today. And thanks to AI having evolved alongside with that, right. those products are actually really good and they can make a lot of money I get it. through subscriptions as yes. opposed to selling uh, physical products. Right, it's the, the, the monetization of the data uh, model. Correct. So, um, as you well know, I mean, AI's been around for 30, 40 years. I actually took an AI course in college, and I barely passed it. <laughs> this was many years ago, but it was certainly it was, not. It was a lot different back it then. It was a lot different back then. And it was a remote course, and I don't want to justify why I did so poorly, but nonetheless, um, the bottom line, what I'm trying to say is that we have, you know, the reason why AI is so prevalent today is because of two reasons. We have AI, first off, we have the, the amount of data, as you just generated, as you just mentioned, but we also have the compute technology, the compute power, which allows us to process and analyze this data on a large scale. Um, so I think that in itself, and you know, the, the concept of you collecting this data and then finding its purpose later on is very insightful. I mean, probably a lot of companies didn't realize the power that this would, would incur and the value that this incurs uh, until it's too late when they don't have the data anymore, right? You know what's funny? A lot of those companies came back and said, uh, we want an AI system right now. I said, where is your data? Now, yeah. the good thing about that is why I said that digital transformation today is driven by, um, from an AI standpoint yeah. is because because of the la large, language, large language models, right. we can actually use 
outside data, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's not the data from either your employees or your right. customers, right? Right. So, so that. But at least it starts something that's tangible yeah. for that CEO or that C-suite yeah. uh, team, right? And they see something that, okay, we invest in these in about three months, we have results. Right, right. Versus before, when we were pitching them, hey, you know, you gotta, you gotta do the cloud, you gotta do yeah, these, you gotta yeah. do that, it becomes, it's very expensive, yeah. and we don't see when we're gonna have new products. But in terms of, of, of uh, generating new products, right, this is where AI is crucial. In terms of generating new products, right now AI helps us generate right, new products right, because right. it's not advanced data analytics like we had just a few years ago. Mm -hmm. And you're like, okay, there might be an opportunity here. We still have to do some work there, mm -hmm. right? Our digital design agency would do some work there with that data and try to see what is the one, two, three ideas mm -hmm. for the that are worth investing in. Right, right. Today we can do that with AI, it's a lot quicker. Of course, right. So this is an alignment with what we're doing here in Intellicon for this for this particular event around uh, artificial intelligence and CI in the what we call the intelligence ecosystem, which is really an expansion of all the different areas that intelligence can be used. So utilizing AI as a catalyst and actually as a, uh, a augmented CI is what we're calling it, using AI as a tool to help human intelligence develop behaviors that can help monetize the data through understanding of its usefulness and understanding how it can be, um, you know, something that can be monetized for that organization. And that's huge. Yeah. And, and for the CI uh, uh, professional, um, AI-assisted tools can save a lot of time Tremendous. and can also, if they put together right, because there's a lot of tools out there. Of course. And they great tools, right? Yeah. But if we can, if you allow us to customize a little bit, they're much better. Oh, of course, I'm they're sure. They're even better tools. Yeah. And for the CI professional or the business intelligence professional, if, you, if you're looking for internal intelligence, it's like, hey, how can I be, where should I be putting my resources yeah. right now, right? It's yeah. always the question, you know? Yeah. The resources are scarce, so are we going to invest here? Are we going to invest in that? Of course. Where, where, where are we going to go next, right? You want that answer, right? Uh, with AI today, with the right tools, you can get that done much faster and you can see things that you didn't see before. But there's one important aspect, mm -hmm. right? Uh, self-driving cars, right? We yeah. all have seen the self-driving cars. Yeah. In 2008, somebody told me, when I was still living in Silicon Valley, in, 20, in 10, 12, 10, 12 years, by 2020, yeah. we're going to be I've heard the same. all of that. Yeah, I said no, same. because the compute power is not there. But also, have you ever been to Italy? Have you been to Germany? They drive very differently. Yeah, of and course. And I haven't been to India, but I've seen the movies. Yeah. <laughs> That's a whole <laughs> you know? other ball game, man. Yeah. That's all so crazy. how are you going to train a system to do that? Yeah. Um, the point is that today we have self-driving technology, and, and we can use it today, right. but always a person has to be behind, yeah. right? The human has to be the responsible yep. party, right? Yep. We're, we're not there where those things are totally autonomous. Yep. Right? Yep. It's the same thing with, with intelligence tools. Yeah. When you're using AI for intelligence, you still want to be the one that judges. Absolutely. But the advantage is that it'll show things that you didn't see. Just like that autonomous car will show you that dock that's in the middle of the road that you didn't see. Yep, yep. It's assisting you. Exactly. Oh, wow, there is a dock there. I yeah, didn't see it, yeah. but the car did. Yeah, so it's these tools that, especially AI helps you see these things much faster. Correct. And, and more accurately but you still need that human interface on top of that to be able to make the judgment calls and the gut calls and the other sort of evaluating calls that we haven't, we don't have an AI interface to take over yet. Correct. Yeah. So if I could give you an example yeah, on how that works with intelligence, um, imagine a company that's manufacturing a vehicle, mm -hmm. right? Right. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna call it a vehicle, right? Okay. They make a vehicle, right? Okay. Um, they're like, why would I need all these? I make vehicles and I sell it to the dealer, and the dealer buys the vehicle. Right. My customer is the dealer. Right. And our company, no, the user is no, the customer. of course, of course. Right? Whoever buys that car, that's the customer. Yeah. So what what could I do with it? What what am I going to do with all that data, with all that information, yeah. right? That's always a question. Yeah. I said, we're going to find new revenue streams for you. And what are those revenue streams? I said, we don't know yet. Yeah. But imagine this. We're going to track every single user, how they use that vehicle. Where do they go? Of course. Um, yeah. How they use it? Where do they park it? What are their needs? We probably going to be able to track whether they go into the restaurant, yeah. grocery store, yeah. and so on. We're going to be able to build a data profile for that customer. Yeah. And that 
data will allow us to identify opportunities. Maybe the opportunity for a new revenue stream is something that you never thought of. Mm -hmm. That has nothing to mm -hmm. do with making these vehicles, right, right? Right, right, It has to do with something else. Of course, of course. And it might be that, hey, we figure out that if we can develop a partnership with, say, TripAdvisor, mm -hmm. right, for a segment of our customers, yeah. right, it turns out that we could make shared revenue. Yeah, yeah. We don't even have to do that because all we're doing is giving TripAdvisor the opportunity to put that customer in front of them. Providing a service to TripAdvisor. And they give you a cut of what they make. Of course, it. yes. But I'm an automotive company. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You're an IT company now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Everybody's an IT company. <laughs> so using that same electric car um, metaphor that you were referring to, I think I read some facts that said each electric car today generates on the order of something on the, around 10 petabytes of correct. data. That's correct. And that's not only on where you're going and how you're going and how fast and the driving habits, but it's also on the, the wear of your tires, the wear of your brakes, the conditions of the road, the radio stations, all these other permutations on the vehicle performance. And you talk about overload of data. A lot of that may not be used today, but at some point can be very valuable to a third party who's developing some sort of a service or, or product around uh, you know, the replacement of a part based on that data usage. I could probably have one of my engineers find a use for all that data. Yeah, I'm sure they could. <laughs> <laughs> we plug it into a system and then we analyze it and we can probably find opportunities yeah. to use. For instance, here's an, uh, here's an interesting, another example, it's yeah. also an automotive, but um, uh, if you're driving in snow roads, right? Of course, cold, yeah. Right? When they plow those roads, they they salt them, it's not exactly right. salt, but it's it's. Well, I'm sort of, I live in Chicago, sort of, yeah, so yeah, so I you know, totally relate to this. Yeah, exactly. So they got to make sure there's no ice because yeah. ice is the enemy, right? They don't know for sure that road is completely no. the ice, no. right? The only reason it works is because if you have a four-wheel drive car, you know, there is a lot of yeah. the, the mathematical uh, formula for right. it to go wrong. It would have to be a lot of ice right. for it to exactly. go wrong. Yes. And they know that that's not going to happen. Yes. But if you don't have a four-wheel drive car, right? Yeah. And uh, now it, it's if whether you have a snow tires on it yeah, or not, yeah. you have good tires on it. So imagine if we had, for every accident that occurs in Chicago every winter, yeah. right, we had that data. What was in that car? What kind of tires? Yeah, oh my, what, what, yeah. How, how, how good were the, yeah. what was the state of those tires, yeah. right? Was it a four-wheel drive, not a four-wheel drive? Yeah. And what patch of the road was it? Yep. And we would be able to know and we were able to save a lot of lives, mm -hmm. but we will be able to know where that plow, that de-icing chemical is yeah, not working. Right, and you scale that to every city, and then you scale that to not only cities, but now you can do it to, to appliances, to smart cities, to other things that are right. monitoring your refrigerator, your microwave, your, your razor, or whatever. All of this becomes data that can be used in that context, and you scale that, and oh my gosh. You know, the opportunities are, are endless. You've got power. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> wow, very interesting stuff. So, um, cycling this back to the intelligence space um, and trying to wrap this up because we can go on on this conversation, I think, for a long time. There's a lot to, to unpack in this sort of uh, Goes uh, all the discussion. way to infinity. Yeah, it really cool. does, it really does. So, um, as part of Skip's intelligence, um, up leveling in the ecosystem we talk about in Skip. This falls right in line, the AI applications, especially around the monetization of data and the intelligence you can drive out of that is strict, tremendously in line with the, the Skip value prop as we go forward, especially as we start building up these intelligence centers of excellence I've been talking about around the world. We can have communities in each of these locations that can be developmental areas and data collection areas that can help with intelligence and, and so forth in that space. So I look forward to working with you and helping develop that in the Skip community. We look forward to being part of it. Outstanding, and some thank I, you so I much. I always for your told time. you this is a big thing. It is a big thing, <laughs> absolutely. Thank you so much again. Thank you so much. Excellent.